In this tutorial for beginning Blender users, I'll show you how to go about making some simple parts of this object, like this little roll cage type structure in here. One of the easier ways to do things, you know, you can always come up here and add a curve to the scene, and then you go into edit mode, and you get to the points of the curve, and you can move it around in space. Of course, once you add a curve to the scene, you have the curve button available over here, and you can work in 2D or 3D if you want, if you want to constrain it. But this type of modeling is okay. So I've done this in the past where you do this, you press E, you add another element there that's below the surface there. I can't see that, so I have to move that up like that. And eventually end up with a maybe the curve that you're looking for. And then once you have that curve, I'll just say we start with that curve. That's okay for starters. All right, so then you have the basic curve. And then you change over to full here and then increase the depth like that and it extrudes this surface just like this and that, that's not a bad approach but I found that it, it, for me it's kind of a headache sometimes to try and match things up the way I want it so I don't, it's, it works though I mean it's fine but typically how I usually work is completely different like for like in the roll cage structure like there what I would do is I would I would add a cube. <laughs> a cube? That doesn't make any sense, right? Well, I know it does. Well, yeah, it does. And I'm just going to scale down a little bit like this just for a second. So we'll look. So here's my basic cube. And then what I'm going to do is then I'm going to get a bevel modifier. And then with a the bevel modifier, that gives me access to this control of segments and how much I want this to curve. So let's just crank it up a little bit. You can see there. That way you can see these corners. And then watch when I start cranking up the segments. Really what I'm doing is I'm curving those corners like that. So maybe I want a nice smooth corner like this. And it's really quite smooth. And I'll apply it. In this case, then I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to use the edge loop by picking the edge button down here then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and then right click on that edge just like that. So now I've got an edge. So with the edge, I'm then I'm going to just do, I'll press P and separate by selection. And then I'll leave edit mode and now suddenly I've created a new model right there. If I just click on it right there, suddenly there it is. So I don't even need this anymore here. So I think you can see where I'm heading with it. So suddenly it's a real easy way. Maybe I want it to be a little bit wider like this. Then I'll go into edit mode here. You can't see the points unless you go into vertex mode down in here. So there they are. And maybe I need everything except, let's see. Well, I'll just press A, C and I'll get everything. These I'll get and I'll get rid of those there. And I'll just delete those vertices. Now I have this nice structure already and all those tight loops there. Well, now, so far, that's good, but before you, we do anything else with it, this is essentially a mesh. And you can tell because you have the upside down triangle there. So you have to go convert that over to a curve. Then, when you have your curve, when you go into full mode, or we'll just go full and give it some resolution. Now, take a close look. You have this basic shape that comes up like that. If you want to use another shape besides just the default shape that it's working with, then you would just add another shape to the scene like you might add a circle or like I would come over here and press A and add a circle. It doesn't really matter if I scale it or not, but if I go into here and I take this portion of the circle and just maybe move it out so maybe that's my shape. So there's my funky little shape. All right, and then it's just kind of an oblong thing. And then I can use that Bezier circle in here down as my bevel object. And then it assumes the shape of that as well. Change it by just changing this. So if I scale this, then I'm scaling the object like that. So then I can have any size shape, but it still gives me these nice corners. So then once I get what I like, then you have to convert it back over to a leave edit, whoops, get a, where's my object, convert back to a mesh, and then maybe I'll scale it from here the way I want, and there's a problem on that scaling like that, so I'll just make sure I transform the origin back to the geometry. If we go look, see it's got these nice corners, because sometimes if you try and make your own corners, 
Let's see. Well, this one doesn't corner very well because it's an odd shape, but usually it corners really well. And it prevents things from like sometimes you'll go in and you try to make your own corners like this. Whoops. If I grab this and I just grab these corners like this, sometimes I'm extruding. Let's say I change it over to normal axis mode like this and I do E. We will actually, in that case, normal is not going to work. So I'll just do this here. And then sometimes I'll do R, Z and turn it and then extrude from there E. Like this is going to be actually a little bit tough. Z. Once you have an odd shape with this many type of faces, it's hard to extrude along a normal direction. When I have issues like that, sometimes I just cut out a portion and I make it its own object. Then I do the extrusion, then I reattach it in there. All right, well, so hopefully that gives you some ideas, just optional ways for building models. It's pretty powerful and fast, and you can, you can pull curves out of all kinds of surfaces and make some really unique things, especially if you can uh, combine it with the proportional editing tools. So you model something with proportional editing, steal this, the curve out of there, and then turn that curve into an object like this. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.